Hello, this is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Gumbel, this is Christopher Draves, and this show is for fans, by fans, and brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue. You can get all your hockey needs, local hockey, jer uh, hockey jerseys throughout the Midwest, all your hockey gear, or and to find out if they have something just because it's specific and you're looking for it and not sure if they have it, you can call them at 414-800-7585. HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They'll give you great customer service, and they're located across the street from the Wilson Park Ice Center. Oh, and if you need gas, there's a Clark gas station on the other side. Exactly. <laughs> All right, but also, uh, please visit um, HockeyFightsCancer.com. Um, it, it is Hockey Fights Cancer Awareness Month, ho or, or Cancer Awareness Month. It's Movember. Um, I won't be shaving this month. Um, it's no shave November for most people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but it is a good cause. Um, so, but for why you're here, let's talk about some hockey. The Admirals play the San Antonio Iguanas Dragons slash Rampage. <laughs> yeah, during this game, their Rampage, each period they wore a different jersey honoring their uh, hockey heritage down there in San Antonio. Yep. Uh, this was a 3-1 Admiral win in uh, regulation, which is a good thing. Yep, we keep San Antonio from getting a point, which they're a divisional opponent. Uh, um, we're currently tied for first. Correct. All right. Score. And, oh, we're on a two-game regulation win streak. Well, I say stick taps to just being tied for first, man. Uh, yeah. Uh. All right. Shots on goal were 11-9. San Antonio in the first. Second period was a 10-7 Milwaukee. Third period it was 10-9 San Antonio. Shots were even 28 for the game. Uh, Milwaukee, for the first time in a while, one for one on the power play. And uh, San Antonio was 0 for 3. Which San Antonio coming into the game had the best power play in the league yeah. at 30.2%. Um... Yes, yeah, San Antonio started off the game scoring. This would be your cue. Yeah, uh, scoring the first goal of the game was Jordan Cairo uh, scoring his first of the year. This is from Nolan Stevens and Nico Mikola. Uh, Stevens sixth and uh, Nico Mikola's fifth of the year. Um, and then our leading goal scorer got on the board, with it, which is Yakov Trenin, his sixth. With assists from Anthony Richard, his second, and Matt Donovan, his fourth. That was on the power play. Um, and then Daniel Carr got a breakaway, a uh, shorthanded goal, with an assist from Cole Schneider, his third, and Matt Donovan, his fourth. So Donovan has two points. Yeah, that was Daniel Carr's fifth of the year. Yep. And then uh, Laurent Dolphin buries the empty netter that literally just dropped right in front of him in front of the puck. Or the puck dropped right in front of him in front of the net. It's yeah. an empty net. If you miss that, you're going to the ECHL. Yeah, but you're Dauphin got his fourth for the year. And this is from Cole Schneider, his fourth. And Daniel Carr, his fourth. So, yeah, Daniel <laughs> Carr and uh, Schneider, they got on the board a lot. I'm liking how Daniel Carr is uh, actually playing well for Milwaukee. I was a bit hesitant when we picked him up. So, since coming here, he has nine points. Yeah. Uh, Cole Schneider also had probably the best two minutes I ever saw defensively from a forward. Um, for those of you who either listened or watched the game, if you're wondering why there was a 10-second runoff at the end, the Admirals served an extra 10 seconds due to a clock malfunction in the arena. Yeah. So, they ran 10 seconds off the clock after the Admiral scored. Yeah, they were trying to, like, correct or uh, screw up. So, 
that's why there was after the goal and there was all the confusion of is it a goal is it a goal it was never about is it a goal or isn't it a goal it was about what the clock should be yeah so um also, what's your opinion on the behavior of the San Antonio Rampage mascot? That fool was climbing on the glass, reaching over the glass, basically doing stuff that uh, you don't typically see a mascot do. I... Come on, there's got to be some sort of rules for a mascot. You can't be climbing on the Well, the, the one thing that I really didn't like is the puck went up the glass, hit him... And then... There was no fan interference called or anything. Yeah. Like, it, it, we as fans, like, I don't think I've ever seen a mascot do that. Until tonight. Me, partially, I was hoping he'd fall over. <laughs> yeah, because he was doing basically what Drake did during the uh, Bucks raptors Eastern Conference playoffs last season. Remember how Drake kept... Uh, Walking onto the Raptors bench and high-fiving players and massaging them. You can't do that if you're a fan. In a mascot, you're a representative of that team. San Antonio should get hit with some type of penalty for that behavior. Yeah. You don't see Roscoe at Admiral Games doing that. You don't see Nash at Predators Games doing that. Shoot, you don't even see Gritty doing that. Yeah, you don't see any mascot doing that, yet T-Bone in San Antonio gets away with it. Yeah, I I I, I, yeah, I I don't get it, but they need to put they need to put an end to that. Yeah, I I I saw that. Oh, and by the way, to the San Antonio Rampage fans, what in the blue hell is this? Yeah, we've been asking that question since last season, and we still can't come up with an answer. Could you please tell us? Because we're trying to learn about the different traditions of the fan bases. Like. And like Rockford, I said, what is this? Like, I don't get it. Like, what is it? I mean, well, like in Rockford, when they score, they sing. They all play. Are they all, all the fans sing? Boom, shake the room. Yeah, I mean, I don't get it. All right, anyway, stars but, of the game. Um, three stars of the game. Third star of the game was uh, Jordan Cairo with one goal. Uh, second star of the game was Matt Donovan with two assists. And first star of the game was Connor Ingram with twenty-seven saves and 20, 28 shots. Um, on my list, uh oh, is Illy Tolvanen. How is trending a minus one with a goal? Okay, I think them plus minus stats are a little confusing. I think that's wrong, so I, I actually think that's wrong because you can't be a plus minus and have a goal. So you can't ha have one goal scored and then you score a goal and still have a minus. Yeah. That doesn't work. And Trennan was on the ice for, or Tolvanen was on the ice for Trennan's goal. So they both should be zero. So I think that's a mistake. Uh, Tenardi played a very good game but ended up minus one. Uh, Carrier, I did not like how uh, he let his guy outwork him on the one goal. Kairou literally outworked him. To get to the puck, and and that's something I think that needs to be addressed, and that's systemly that their defensemen keep getting outworked. Um. Outside of that, Billy Huso was in net, stopped. Twenty six of twenty eight played fifty eight minutes forty three seconds. Well, the empty net does not count against him. They played at the AT&T Center, which happens to be the same arena that the Spurs play in, who happened to be a sponsor of San Antonio. Um, and they had 7,007 people. Didn't look like it. Um, yeah, there was a lot of empty seats in that arena. Your referees were uh, Oliver Gruen and Chris Walterstrad. Uh, your linesmen were Michael Me Me Megan Muggins. Good God. M I G G A N S. Might be Megan, too, as well. They're saying it might be Multiple Megan. Multiple G's make it Megans. Uh. Megans. And then Carl Sasson. Yeah. Um, out 
outside of that, runtime for the game was 2 hours 12 seconds. Um, I do want to know what happened to the 10 second runoff. Um, because there were multiple times where they should have had a period t or a, a radio timeouts so that the radio crews could catch their breath. I didn't see those happening. Um, last season, the Admirals were 5, 1, and 2 against San Antonio, uh, leaving them with a record of 3, 4, and 1, which confuses me. Um, over the last five years, the uh, Admirals are 15, 2, 2, and 1 versus San Antonio's 5, 13, and 2, and this year in our first meeting, we are now 1 and 0. Oh. Uh, top scorers for the teams are for our team currently. I can just go off of this list. Daniel Carr with, not, with 5 goals, 4 assists for 9 points. Yakov Trenin, 6 goals, 3 assists for 9 points. Laurent Dolphin, 4 goals, 4 assists for 8 points. Cole Schneider, 4 goals, 4 assists for 8 points. And Colin Blackwell, three goals, seven assists for, or three goals, four assists for seven points. Uh, those are your uh, um, leading scorers. In the last five, the Admirals are four and one. Um, we are currently tied for first place. Um, our power play percentage is currently at 17.65. Uh, penalty kill is at... At home, 84%, 84.85%. And on the road, they are 81.25%. Um... Coming into this game, uh, they were uh, uh, San Antonio was thirty percent on the power play, and they were at ninety five percent penalty kill at home. Today, those got drastically changed. So those are your stats for today. Um, what's your thoughts on Connor Ingram now that we've seen him a bit? Well, he seems to be finding his place on the team. He's uh, getting better as a goalie, and I'm liking the improvement. And our defense was actually helping him out, so it's not like he had to carry the load of the game on him, on his own, you know? Um, The other person I've been paying a lot of attention to, and I catch myself watching him play a lot, and, you know, whenever you find yourself watching a guy, like, it, you know, I'll always watch, like, the defenseman and stuff like that. Um... I find myself watching St Santini a lot. He seems to be playing a very defensive-minded game, blocking shots in front of the net. He's yeah. not afraid to get in there and get hit with the puck a bit. Um, he's not really a big guy, from what you from as far as like defensemen go. He's not like Tenorti or anything, where Tenorti's like six six two twenty something. But he seems to get in the way of the puck a lot, and that does help a lot. Um, that's the current rundown of the division. Uh, currently in first place is the Iowa Wild. Second place is us. We are tied by points, but Iowa gets the, uh, first place position due to a game in hand. Yeah, because we've played 13 games and they've only played 12. Uh, tied for third place is San Antonio and Chicago at 15 points apiece. Um... And then from there goes Grand Rapids with 14 points, Rockford with 12 points, Manitoba and Texas with 8 apiece. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to uh, watching round two between the uh, Rampage and the Admirals. But let's get into, well, what should be hopefully a <laughs> rebound tomorrow. Which, yeah, tomorrow the Predators play the San Jose Sharks. This is a 9 p.m. puck drop in the Central because it is a West Coast game. All right, your uh, your top five point getters for San Jose are Thomas Hurdle, uh, 17 games Hurdle. played, six goals, 11 assists. Then you got Brent Burns, uh, games played, 17, three goals, 13 assists. 
Dean Gotti, Vander Kane, 14 games played, 10 goals, 5 assists. Uh, Logan Couture, uh, 17 games played, uh, 2 goals, 12 assists. And then Eric Carlson, 16 games played, 1 goal, 10 assists. Uh, San Jose is 2-3 and three in their last 5. The last meeting versus Nashville was on October 8th. Uh, Nashville won 5-2. to two. In that game, Roman Yossi had two goals. Uh, Kyle Turris, Phil Forsberg, and Dante Fabro each had a goal. Um, Thomas Hurdle in his last five games, he has three goals, four assists. Uh, Brent Burns in his last five, one goal and three assists. Evander Kane in his last five, he has three goals, two assists. So those three, keep an eye out for him. All right, in net, uh, the goalies are... Uh, well, Empty. Mar <laughs> yeah, uh, Martin Jones, currently, he has a 4-7, 0-1 record with a 3.52 goals against average. And then, Ouch. And then Aaron Dell, he has a 2-3, 0-0 record with a 3.83 goals against. Ouch. Yeah, I told you you'd probably be embarrassed when I read off the goalie stats. This should be a victory given what you're there giving you on the goalie front. But, um, uh, yeah, I'd say watch out for uh, Kane, Hurdle, and Burns. And um, then, to a lesser extent, Logan Couture, because he could uh, creep up there. Um, also, keep an eye out for the old man, Patrick Marlowe. Yeah, you, you can never turn your back on Marlowe. He's known to jump up and bite people in the butt. So, uh, yeah, no, he is, he's not. Um, what's his name? Uh, Antoine Roussel, I think it was. Well, he bit somebody in the playoffs once. All right, well, either way, that's my preview to Sharks. They play the Predators tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Central Time. Um, so going forward, we'll see how the Preds rebound and see how this game comes out. Um, yeah. We should be able to at least catch most of the game. Yeah, we have a bunch of uh, commitments tomorrow, but uh, yeah, we'll be definitely covering the game tomorrow, and we'll be back at it Sunday for our uh, game two between the Rampage and the Admirals. What time does that game start on Sunday? I believe it's a three o'clock puck drop. Ah, so it'll be an early one Sunday, hopefully. That would be beneficial considering, uh, don't the Packers play Sunday as well? At noon. Yeah, exactly. So, uh... We'll see how things play out, but uh, I'm I'm predicting Nashville to win because it uh, is a three o'clock puck drop. That was right. Yeah, so hopefully uh, Nashville could rebound from that horrible loss last night. Yeah, I I always say sometimes you got to get knocked out to get back up and fight another day. You know, um, one of the most famous quotes from Friday is you know um, you always live to fight another day. You know, yeah. and you, sometimes you get you know, knock down just to get away. You know, and that's that's just what happened. They and and actually coming out of this, believe it or not, um, injured in said game for Colorado, I know that that's not what we really like looking as a plus, but as far as like the future for Colorado goes, they lost Nikita Zadorov, which is one of their top defensemen outside of Makar. Um, they lost Phil Grubauer, their starting goalie, and they lost McKinnon. Those are the three that were hurt during the game. Yeah, and the minute you lose McKinnon, yeah, that's uh, that's a tough one for Colorado. But luckily for us, we don't have to deal with the Avalanche. Not again until I believe February. Yeah, so, so we still got time. Um, but but going... if there's unless there's anything else you want to add, I think we pretty much covered it. Nope, not to my recollection. I'd like to uh, get out yeah, of here. Congratulations, Admirals. You're tied for first in the division. It's good to say that. We haven't been able to say that all year. Man, well, we weren't able to say that last year. Yeah, well, we did like at the beginning of last year. Remember when they were red hot last year? And then he kind of... What? You're not allowed to talk about that yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, forget about that downtime. Yeah. All right, anyways, uh, that's our show. Yeah, this show is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue. Get all your hockey gear there. Um, Visit them at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. And if you can, donate to Hockey Fights Cancer. It's a good cause. They're trying to kill cancer. We have to kick cancer's ass. We really do. It's no laughing matter, people. Instead of just fighting cancer, let's kick cancer's ass and win the battle. 
Yep. Um, but that's more empowering. You know, let's beat it. Let's beat the illness. Don't just fight it. Let's beat it. Let's put an end to it. Yep. And then um, uh, we will be back tomorrow night. It'll probably be done around 1 in the morning. It's so, going to be a late one. Because like so, I said, we got some uh, commitments we're going to do as well as this podcast. So it's gonna well, be the long. game isn't slated to end until midnight. Yeah, I know. And we have so, to travel back from where we're going to be. And we have to do the show. And Yeah, it's going to be a busy night tomorrow night. Yep. We're looking forward to it, though. Yep. And, Our uh, buddy Josh's birthday is tomorrow. That's why we have some traveling to do. Yep, so uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Well, technically Sunday twice, but. You know what we mean. But you know Thank what you we mean. Thank you for watching. Like us on Facebook. Watch our videos. Follow us. Tell your friends. Keep supporting from Milwaukee. And, and also subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, also, let's try to hit 700 likes on Facebook. And for the love of God, can you support us on YouTube, even though we haven't posted anything up there in a while? We posted last night. Yeah, well, we got to get more consistent with that. Anyways, yeah, that's I uh, forget. enough of that. All right. We will see, see you guys later. Peace.